this is a really good thing to remember working with people. There's five things that control the speed of the sale of their home. And the first is the location. The second, close that if you would, Ron. First is location, and not in any particular order, is the layout, the condition, the financing available in the marketplace, and the price you put on it. I heard this back in 1982. I've used it ever since. Look, the five things that control the speed of the sale of your home. Location, layout, condition, financing in the marketplace, and the price you put on it. Of course, back in the early 80s, financing was 16, 17%. You know, I think, think the financing going up here is a little bit of a challenge. You try that one. The, uh, um, so <clears throat> in those, yes? Uh, no, if interest rates are a single digit, it's good. Okay, we've been spoiled for so many years that now we're operating in the sixes and we think it's terrible, you know. We're spoiled children because we've had such good rates. I bought a house in 1981 with 16.5% interest. People, there are still things going on in any market. There are things that go on all the time, okay? But we're going to come to that in just a second. So let's talk about of the five things that control the speed of the sale of our home. What things can we change? What do we have control over in the, of those five things? Anybody? Condition. The condition. Condition. And what else? Price. price. We can't change the location. Good location, higher price. Bad location, lower price. Don't expect to get the same thing. You're going out there comparing houses, cul-de-sacs to cul-de-sacs, you know, through streets to through streets. Try and stick with that. Um, so we just adjust by price. How about? What was the other one? Layout. Uh, we, what about, we can't change the layout. Change and so how does layout affect pricing of the house? All bedrooms up. Yep. You know, it's not always popular unless you're in a real uh, young person's neighborhood where they're having babies. Right? So typically all bedrooms up won't sell as well. You know, if you're in a neighborhood where you have everything's four bedrooms and you only have three, that affects it. Right? Um, so layout we can only adjust for with price. price. Okay. The, um, so we can work on those, and but those are the things that really control. If we get all those aligned correctly, then the house, you can reasonably expect your home to sell within four to six months. The um, talked about that. Communication is critical, both with buyers and sellers, more so with sellers. And you know what's the hardest phone call to make is that Donna making that phone call, and she hadn't had a showing in two weeks. Okay. But at least you can look and see if anything is sold within your area or price range. Give them an update. You need to be in touch with them, I would, I think, every seven to ten days if possible. And what I did with the personal assistant was I had my personal assistant call. We split the list. And I would call half of it one week and the other half the next week. And the week I wasn't calling, the personal assistant was calling and just saying, hey, Mark said, asked me to give you a call and just let you know nothing's happening, but nothing's happened for anybody else either. Nothing else is sold. Hopefully we'll have more buyers next week. And by the way, we have an ad coming out on your house, you know, uh, a week from Wednesday. So, and record all your ads. You know, we're going in a lot of different directions here. Seems like we're talking more about listings, but maintaining the list, listings control the market. A sign out there is your best advertising <coughs> that you can ever do with your name on it. Um, so, um, really work on communication. Um, <clears throat> you know, probably the dip most difficult thing we deal with in, in working with sellers is the, is the uh, repairs, when you get into repair issues. Sometimes you can resolve repairs by offering money, and it's simple for everybody just to have a $500 or $1,000 at closing in lieu of repairs. But the main thing with the seller is that if the seller's really digging in their heels and objecting, you've got to get them back to the big picture, okay? So if they're dealing, I just was helping some agents in the Woodlands office with a half million dollar sale. They were arguing over about two or three thousand dollars in repairs. And I said that's one percent of the overall value of this transaction. You know, and you've got inspection reports saying it needs to be done. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you know, you really need to think about working something out with these guys. Because that report doesn't go away. You know, you you end up having that sale file through for two or three thousand dollars. And the, how long did it take me to get that contract for you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? It took four to six months. You know, if it takes us another four to six months, 
Are you willing to, to take that time to try and get your next buyer, or would you rather work things out with your buyer and get on with your life, get on with your dreams, get on with your plans? And um, the, and when you have, if you put it back on the market, now you're going to get two inspection reports. Whatever that first one didn't pick up, the second one's going to pick up other stuff. They're not going to be identical. So it's twice as hard to go through the sale the second time. Um, we all wish we didn't have to deal with repairs. Our life would be a lot better. Um, get testimonials. Again, we're trying to um, show excellence in what we're offering to our to our uh, buyers and sellers. So it doesn't, you know, at, at closing, uh, it's a good time to do it. Um, and just, it's, I'm not talking about a paragraph, just one or two sentences on, on how great a job you did or you know, if they're really pleased with your services. And then have those, those testimonials I think are wonderful to use when you're dealing with um, buyers coming in or buyers you met for the first time. It reassures them, and particularly on listing appointments. Uh, picking up buyers, again, it's about lead generation, um, holding open houses. Roland did something pretty creative he shared with me this morning. Why don't you share it with the group? Well, for the last, what was it, four weeks, I guess? Well, the last, I, we just kind of had a thought about why not open an open house on Thursdays. And the two Thursdays that I held it open, um, was not, last, not yesterday, but the Thursday prior, uh, we just went to a listing appointment where they're going to list with us on uh, in first of September. And as soon as they sell that, they'll they're, we're going to get them as a buyer. Uh, they're moving up, and it's an excellent listing too. I mean, I, I was shocked when we went in, but um, and then another lady walked in. I had two people showed up on Thursday, and that's I got both of them. I mean, that was just. I don't know if that's just luck or what. I've never but heard of a Thursday open house. This is thinking <laughs> outside the box, yeah, this, which is this really year cool. Mark, everybody's got to think out of the box. You do. But he's really not to this horn because he's done several on Thursdays. And every one that he's done, we've picked up business. It may not be business for this 30 days, but it's business that's going to be our business at the end of the year, first of next year. So it's just doing something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And I was telling Roland that I uh, share with the group as well, <laughs> that I talked to a very successful agent uh, in this area, it's not with us, that we're working on getting with us. And uh, they were holding open houses on Friday nights mm -hmm. from like four to seven. People are driving home from work. Maybe this is the weekend your wife's been beating on you, you're gonna look at houses, right? And you're driving home from work on Friday night and hey, let's just stop in and see what this is all about. And maybe they haven't selected a realtor yet. And uh, she said she got a lot of, you know, Friday nights we think about going out to dinner and doing stuff like that. You could still do that after seven, but it's, but it's, it's that thinking outside the box. Open houses don't have to just be done on a Saturday mm -hmm. and Sunday. 